Hello my friends, today we'll be doing something different. Today we will be taking this photo together. And uh, then after we take the photo, I will show you the behind the scenes, how I uh, set up all the lights and stuff. And then we will take it to the computer and we will edit it together. So let's get right to it. I already have the red background in place from a different shoot the other day. So what I need now is to bring in my base, the table I'll be working on. There is my base and I chose a small one because I want to put the fuser as close as possible to my product. And you will see why in a second. Now on this table, I'll put a black acrylic. So this is my, my black acrylic. It's, this is a two by two. So I'm going to set it like this. And then for my next props, I'll be using this acrylic boxes. I got these ones on Amazon. It's a set of three. They all nest inside of each other. So I have three of them. I'll be playing around with these ones. And let's see. The first thing I need to do, they're very dusty, so I have to clean them a little bit. I'm sure we'll have to clean a little bit more on post, but if we can remove some of those fingerprints, I will do it right now. I will be using some of these gloves just so I don't put any more fingerprints on it. And they will get to work. Let's see. I'm just gonna spray, this is just glass cleaner. It's called Sparkle and I love this brand. It removes the fingerprints really, really well. And I will use uh, just a little clot. Let's see, something like that. I don't need to clean my acrylic table just because you won't be seeing it that in the photo. So there's one, still has some dust on it. Because it's black, it really shows the dust so easily. So we will be cleaning these surfaces. And I think I only need two. I don't think I need like, the third one. So I'm gonna put this one away. Let's see. So let's see, how do I wanna position this? I think I wanna kind of have them maybe on an angle like this. We'll go with something like that. And then here is our product. I have three bottles of shampoo and conditioner stuff. So I'm thinking I'll put the tallest one maybe there. And then these two guys, they can sit. Does that one go upside down? Let's see, these guys can sit kind of like that. And I wanna put them fairly in the same plane of focus. So then everything gets in focus when I take the photo. So let's start with that, see where it takes us. Now I will be tethering into capture one. And let's see, I have my camera, it's already connected. Let's see what my composition should be. I have a 50 millimeter lens. This is just the G Master 50 millimeter uh, 1.2. So the way I like to build my shot is to start from the back. I'm gonna put this like this so you can see it. I will build my shot from the back to the front. So I will work with the background light first. So let's do that. Let's see, I think maybe I want to I'm a little bit too cropped in. I'm gonna move a little bit backwards, just a little bit, to give myself more room to adjust the composition and post. So now that we have that, I wanna put the light on the background so we get that nice beautiful glow like you saw on the image uh, on the thumbnail. For that I need, let's see. For the background glow, I will be using my AD200. Now for this image, I'll probably end up using a lot of lights. You absolutely don't need to use so many lights. You can use just one light, move it around and then mask it into Photoshop and make a composite out of it. So let's see. I think, let's see, let's take a shot.
And here is our first shot. This is what it looks like with just the background light. I think it's a good start. Now let's add a little bit of rim light. To add a rim light, first I need to bring in a diffusion material. And let's see. I'll put a diffusion material on each side. So I will put this one maybe on this side. Let's try that. And I'll try to put it as close as possible to the table. Something like that. And then I'll put the diffusion material on the other side as well. On to the right side, I have Savage, uh, Savage Translum Heavyweight, and this is the Lee Heavy Frost 229, I believe. So let's try that. Something like that. Are you still able to see? Well, we need to put some light. Let's put some light. I will be using, let's see, I'm gonna angle this camera. Maybe I can make it so you can see it better. On this side, I'll be using a light with a strip box and I will be almost touching the background, something like that. And I'll turn the light on. It probably helps if I plug it in. I need to bring this is closer so I can plug in my other light too. All right, turn this light on. Let's take a shot. And now, we have a nice edge light. I'll put it on the screen too so you can see it. But we have a very nice edge light. Now we need to create an edge light on this other side. So I need another strip box with the light. Let's see, what can I use? I use this one. By the way, on the right side I use my Godox AD400. This is a Godox AD100. So I will turn it on. And I will place it the same like on the other side, almost touching the diffuser, diffuser, on an angle, something like that. And let's see, let's take a shot. Great. Where is my iPad? I lost my iPad somewhere. There it is. Now we have two edge lights. I'll put the image on the screen so you can see it, but it's looking great. So we worked with the background. We worked with the rim light. Now we need to add some color, some light into the front. So I need some lights for the front. So let's see. I will use this is my AD600 and it has a grid and the reason why I put a grid on it is because I don't want any light spilling into my background. So I'll just use it like that straight up, plug it in. All right, let's see. I'm gonna place it maybe there. Take a shot. That is nice. Now I want to add some light from this side. So I need another, let's see, I need another light. This is my Godox AD300. Like I said, you do not need all these lights. You can do this whole shoot with just one light and just move it around. And this is set at power 116. Let's see what that gives us.
Hello my friends, here is the image we ended up with in the studio and after I finished filming I realized that I don't like the way this um, writing over here with the gold foil it's not showing so I went on and took another exposure just like this I'll put a clip on on how I took this exposure I just shot the light through a diffuser right in front of the subject to light this writing and we're going to edit these two images and we'll blend them together on Photoshop. Also, I'm realizing my I forgot to level my camera, so the image is a little bit crooked. We're going to straighten it just like that, and that looks better. So we straightened the image. Now we'll just do a very basic edit. And let's start from the top. I will. It's a little bit underexposed, so I will increase the exposure to 0 0.9, and that makes it a lot brighter. I will also add some contrast plus 16 that looks good for the highlights i will bring them down to negative 19. Uh, the shadows i will i'll bring them down a little bit i want to really darken this area over here because if i open the shadows you will see i don't like the way that looks i want it to be pretty black so i will take them down to Let's see, negative 11, that looks good. For the whites, I will increase them to positive 15, and the blacks, I'll bring them down just a little bit, negative 2. I will add some texture, maybe around 20, 21 looks good. And then also some clarity, 15, 16, 18, that looks wonderful. For the vibrance, I will be adding some vibrance, 22, that looks great. And then I am going to go all the way down to sharpening, hold down option to create a mask and only sharpen the writing on the product. So something like that looks good. Click remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction. And that is looking really, really wonderful. Now with this image selected, I will hold down command and click on the other image where I lightened this uh, writing and then click on sync and that will synchronize all of our edits so both images are edited exactly the same. And now that we have both layers selected, we'll just go to photo, edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now here we are in Photoshop and we open both layers and we want to make sure that they are completely aligned and nothing moved during the shoot. To make sure of that, I will click the first one, hold down um, command and click on the next one then I'll go into edit auto align layers and make sure that they are very very aligned and nothing moved during the shoot which you see we got maybe a very slight um, line over here which means maybe they were not so aligned so I'll take the crop tool and make sure I am on the original ratio and I'll just crop it in a tiny little bit just to make sure that you know Everything looks great. Enter to accept the selection, the crop. Great. So now we have, let's see, underneath is the image I took to lighten this gold foil and the original image is on top. I'm gonna swap them, so I'm gonna bring the original one on the bottom. So you see, this is what we have. The one on the top, when I lighten this uh, foil, it also bring in some detail over here on the writing. So I want to make sure I mask that one in. So with this layer selected, hold down option and click on the mask to create a negative mask. And now we're not showing anything. If you're not familiar with masking, black hides and white reveals. Then I'll take my brush tool over here, the shortcut for the brush, it's B. And then with white color, if you do not have white and black over here, click D to reset the swatches. And now we have a white paintbrush and we can paint into this mask to reveal our effect so you see I can paint from that layer and just bring in some of that light if you want to toggle between the white and the black over here just click on X and I will put the black one and I can just mask some of this out X again to paint with white and I want to bring in some of that brightness and details into this bottle and maybe in this one as well there you go, and this is our before and after, before and after, that just brought in so much more detail. Now I am going to make a new layer, 
and in this layer we're gonna take care of the specular highlights over here I will use the spot healing brush I am going to zoom in hold down Z click on this 100 now I am zoomed at 100% and I will just take care of these spots so just click and drag on your specular highlights let's see that looks good we'll take care of those ones too I can make my brush smaller that looks great let's see everything looks clean this one looks good just a few little spots over here i'm gonna make my brush smaller and just kind of drag over it and there we go that looks good now we do have some dust spots over here i'll take this big one and then i'll show you how to remove the small dust spots but everything looks good command zero and now what i will do i will make a stamp layer of everything i'm seeing for that is command option shift and e and that takes a picture of all the adjustments we've done so far with this layer selected i will go to filter first let's zoom in i'll go z and click on 100 I want to zoom in where I have this dust spots over here. And now we'll go to filter. I will go to noise, dust, and scratches. And here I want to pick a radius until I can see my dust is gone. Seven, I can see dust is gone. Six is gone. One, we can still see dust. So five, we can still see a little bit of dust. I am going to go to seven and I'm going to click OK. And now I will create a negative mask over here to hide this uh, dust and scratches adjustment. And I will only paint it where I need it with the white brush. So go back to the brush, make sure you have white. And now I get to paint off this dust from my image. And this is really a easy and quick way to you know retouch your images and make sure you have no dust sometimes it doesn't matter how much you clean your surfaces especially the plexiglass glass it loves to attract uh, dust and this is just the easy way to fix it command zero and that looks wonderful so let's see our image we started with this image we ended up with this image and this is all i will do to this I could, if you feel like your label is a little bit dark, you can always create a curves or a brightness adjustments and increase maybe the brightness just a little bit, not too much. Invert this mask to hide the adjustment, command I to turn it into a black mask. And then with your white brush, very feathered brush, just paint on your label with white if you want to brighten it a little bit just like that and then when you are done right click on your image and flatten it and this is our final image i hope this was helpful and you learned something new thank you so much for watching my name is skylar ewing i'll see you in my next video